Well, CRTs have definitely gone through a resurgence as of late, and this makes it increasingly difficult to find rather simple consumer sets that normally would be given away for free for a decent price. So I wanted to give myself a little bit of a challenge. I decided I'd give myself a maximum budget of $50 to find a good, unique, retro style CRT that had to be working and I wanted to get it online and have it delivered to me in my house. All right, so enough jibber jabber. I wanna show you how the challenge went. I was able to find a CRT for less than $45 shipped to me. And let's start with the unboxing of that beautiful CRT and then we'll show you how it came out. What's well, a beautiful summer morning here in the fine state of Virginia. And I've got some nature going on behind me. We will have birds tweeting and all kinds of crazy noises. So please excuse that. But today we have an exciting adventure in unboxing. And this has, of course, a CRT inside of it. And uh, this is the box, just to take a first look at it. The bottom three quarters of the box looks pretty solid. It is a new box from Staples, extra large, and I even believe, yep, it says heavy duty down there. So we'll check it out when we open it and see how it looks. And I gotta be honest with you, the poor guy who sold me this must have not really made any money, maybe even lost money to ship me this and uh, pack it. So I'm really rooting for him and hoping that it made it here safe so at least he doesn't have to deal with it anymore. <laughs> but this one came 180 miles, so it wasn't that far from me, or 290 kilometers from my friends. Uh, overseas. This did come from a company called UPS. They had it for a total of two days and went ground shipping. So I'm going to get set up on the tripod and we will cut this thing open and uh, see if it survived. Let's use these old school horror scissors and we'll open up this box. Looks like the CRT might be face down if I'm guessing on the shape of this, but who really knows. Now this is a JVC monitor. Okay, so along the sides we do have, that's a nice idea, some crumpled cardboard. It's better than nothing. Here we go. Oh, so I can feel the bezel. It's not much wrapping around this. Thankfully it's lighter. It's definitely packed with the screen down. This is a JVC, as I said. Now it is missing a front flap that comes down that was not in the listing. It was listed as tested and working. Everything feels pretty solid on here, so nothing appears to be damaged. And this is the TM13U. It is an NTSC set. This one's from April of 1987. Uh, 60 hertz, 120 volts, maximum of 72 watts. So. Still uses a good amount of power. We're gonna go over the inputs and test those and everything else about this monitor. So uh, thankfully it came in one piece. It looks like we're good. Let's take this down to the CRT bunker and get some tests done on it. Ready to start our test. I've got the monitor set up with a lovely PC Engine Core Graphics console with a Crix cart there. Now here's just a quick look at our CRT. As you can tell, we didn't take any damage from that shipping, which is just awesome. And it's, it's fairly dirty, so it needs a good cleaning. Absolutely needs that. Now let's turn on the screen and see if it, oh my goodness, look at that. We've already got volume going. <laughs> wow. So this is the first time it's powering on and who knows how long, wow. So we're running the legendary X here. Again, on the PC Engine Core Graphics in composite video. And I've got our 240p test pattern pulled up and we've got discoloration and a purity issue right in here in the center of our CRT. And I've zoomed in so you can see the area in the center of the screen that we're going to try to fix. It's got a weird purple hue in there. It's definitely a magnetism issue. Hopefully we can use our degaussing wand and get rid of that. All right. 
Here's my wand. And I'm just going to actually try to stay a little bit towards a couple feet away. We'll start from there and kind of move in close. Look how it really distorts it. And back away and cut it off. And wow, it's cleared it up wonderfully. Let me zoom in so you can see that because it's, it's crystal clear now. That entire center and right side where there was that purple hue, it went right away. Now, how cool is this? I have a composite video set up here with, of course, the PC Engine Core Graphics Console. And that's a composite video matrix switcher, which it does have a distribution amp. And then I've got composite video run from there to all three of these similar, yet not the same monitors. On the far left, we have our JVC. You can tell how much it looks exactly like these Commodore monitors, the shells. Look at the fronts of them, nearly identical. Obviously, JVC put their logo up here and then kept the plate here pretty plain. Whereas, if you go down here, Commodore decided to put their logo and everything down here. Now, this one in the middle is the 1701, and on the right we have a 1702. The composite video inputs on the Commodore monitors in the front, along with the audio jack. And these adjustments are all exactly the same. Thankfully, the Commodore monitors still have their button cover. This has been a lot of fun. I'm glad we were able to accomplish our goal of getting, again, that $50 or less CRT. And uh, if you liked this and want to see more comparisons of the three of these monitors and what's different on the insides, because I know some of the build-out's going to vary between the three of them, then uh, let me know in the comments, and I'll be glad to come back and highlight these three CRTs and basically the comparison of what's the same and what's different. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode. Thanks for joining me. And I will see you next time with some more retro content.